there is nothing wrong with your internet, do not attempt to adjust your settings. We are controlling the podcast. We control the squealing and the screams. We can make your heart flutter, your eyes blur from tears, or sharpen your mind to crystal clarity. For the next hour, sit back. We are in control of what you hear. We repeat, there is nothing wrong with your setting. You are about to experience the awe and mystery known as the female mind. You are now entering the Fangirl Zone. Hello everyone and welcome to Sci-Fi Talk on the Fangirl Zone, a podcast where we discuss shows on the Sci-Fi Channel. I'm Sean Fangirl S. And I'm Steve, and tonight we'll be discussing Episode 7 of Season 1 of Ghost Wars. Jeez, I can't believe we're that far in. It's like, for real. I know I've said that like every episode, but it doesn't seem like it's seven episodes already. Exactly. All right, so a little bit of news that we've talked about on our other sci-fi shows, but you may not have listened to those because you may not be a fan. Net neutrality, I know it's a big thing right now. The FCC is set to... Make a vote. Yeah. Make the vote on repealing, which we really hope does not happen. That's going to affect everything. Listening to the shows, going on Facebook, going on sci-fi.com, checking out our website, shopping online. And it it could be, yes, it could be really, really bad. So because it affects us and affects you if you're listening to us, we really want your help. Go to gofccyourself.com and write to the FCC and tell them that you want them to continue net neutrality. It's important because otherwise it's going to hit us all in the wallets. If you have cut the cord and you are doing basically all streaming through like Roku and Google and Fire Stick, it's going to affect you. Oh, and Apple TV. I almost forgot that one. Sorry. It's going to affect you because whoever your internet... Internet provider is can choose to start charging you a whole lot more to get what you're doing right now. And the whole point of us cutting the cord was to to, save money. (laughs) Yes. I know I'm looking at it and I was about to do it. Now I'm kind of worried because it's going to save me just personally over like $120 a month. Right. And why give that money to the internet, uh, internet service providers? Right. Because You're saving it because you need it for yourself and living expenses. Right. You do email, online gaming, watching anything online, listening to podcasts, listening to any music anywhere, at heck, getting news, social media. It's like all these things are super integrated in our lives. We are an internet society. Heck, even research. Right. You know, I've I've had looked stuff up when I was writing term papers. So make sure your voice is heard. You may think it's a little thing, but I'll tell you, standing in line during Black Friday sales, uh, happened that happened to come up, and yeah, I was championing everybody go online for it. But a lot of people didn't know everything, right? And there was a lot more people which. I'm going to say I was kind of surprised as many people around me that were informed. So very important because it can cause a whole lot of havoc. And just take a few minutes, go to go FCC yourself, just r- fill it everything in because it takes you to the FCC page. Just write in that you want to keep net neutrality and Hopefully everything works out, and then we can all do the cord cutting and save us all a lot of money. All right. Now that was our PSA. We will go on to the show. On with the show. All right. Episode 7 had a 0.08 in adults 18 to 49, which was an improvement over the previous week. Now that sports are over with. With 0.326 million viewers making it the 117th cable show of the day. And once again, unfortunately, episode 5 did not make the top 25 in the live plus 7 days. Now, I have not seen anything online talking about, you know, Renew Ghost Wars. I'm assuming we are on with that. 
Unless I would they, think so, yes. I'm saying unless they already were guaranteed a second season. But I haven't heard that either. So when you're live tweeting, make sure you hashtag Renew Ghost Wars. Yes. Start now. We've only got six episodes left in this season one, so. Always start early because you never know what's going to happen. Right. All right. Let's jump into episode seven. Whistle past the graveyard. A power outage sends Port Moore into Tailspin and somehow makes the ghost stronger, prompting Roman, Jimmy, Landis, and Doug to trek up to the dam to get the power back. But a long-buried town secret threatens to tear the group apart. Well, that's a bit of an understatement. Exactly. Like, all of it. Yeah. Because we know, basically, the only thing holding the ghost back is the electricity. Yes. So then, yeah, they're going to be strong if there's total darkness. We've seen that in the forest. Yes, we did. So, yeah, dark isn't good, and candles aren't going to do crap. No. All right, so let's start at the church where Abigail broke the window. Yes. And Roman kind of looks and doesn't understand why she did it, because then she just left. But she was looking at her hand. I don't know if you noticed that. Yes, I did. She wanted to figure out if it was cut or not. Yeah, and just, it didn't look like it was cut. But she's just kind of looking like, huh, okay, and walks away. And then all these ghosts in the churchyard, they keep kind of like zapping in and out. And Roman's just like, what do you want? Yeah, there's got to be something in that church. And it's probably Father Dan's glowy orb. Yeah, we'll get to that. But that, That's the golden ghost egg or something. <laughs> It's like their golden ticket to Wonka World or something. Yeah. <laughs> well, all of a sudden, yeah, power starts going out. And Roman's like, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's open season now. Right. I mean, they they do stay away from him, which I was kind of surprised. Because right. they have wreaked havoc around him. Yes, but they have not actually accosted him in any way. And I, I, the only thing I can guess is that they don't, because they know what his abilities are, it wouldn't affect him like it affects the other people, the, the illusions. Okay, yeah. That they're able to pull off on everybody else won't affect Roman like that. That's the only thing I can keep, come up with. Is yeah. Why they're staying pretty much clear of Roman. Well, I mean, we did see the one episode where, like, his eyes, his eyes got all, like, lit up, and he's like, right, you yes. have to leave. So I'm wondering if somehow he can banish them. Very possible. But almost to, like, a weird, you know, middle realm where right. they're not. It's mentioned. Yeah. We have Lambda. They're still trying to trek right along with their little experiments. Right. Trying to figure out what Roman is. Right, and when Dr. Barker says he might be a slider, and I love it because yeah. the other guy goes, you mean that show that was on? And I'm like, oh, my God, because it was a sci-fi show, yes, which I love that show, by the way, and yeah. happened to see, like, the box set this weekend when I was shopping, yeah. which I was, thought was hilarious just randomly. But I'm like, okay, kudos to you for acknowledging your other show that was right. awesome. But she's like, oh, no. But she looks at him like, I don't know what that is. She's like, no, people who are extraordinarily affected by the presence of electrical equipment. Now, I swear that I just seen a news thing about this, too, but it was, that's not what they called them. Right. But that the people, like, can't even be around electrical equipment because it, like, makes them sick. Right. And gives them headaches, and they had to go... God, somewhere where there's like a giant, like telescope or something, because it's kind of like um, a dead zone around it, and it's the okay. only place they're able to survive. Mm. Weird, yeah. But she's like, okay, let's just call it a night. It's like everybody's gonna leave, and then, well, maybe not. Yeah, because the power sheds gets <laughs> shut down, and the ghosts are on the move. And I didn't realize it that Ryan, who was the guy who had like the moth issue and like he right. jumped off the building, 
Yeah. When we find out this is when Landis first sees a ghost and doesn't doesn't know she's a ghost because the woman just walks right past her in that red dress. Right. Yes, in the red dress. Ryan like kind of comes at Landis and doesn't get her because Paolo has like what a a ghost zapping weapon. It's like what the hell? He's suddenly right. a ghostbuster. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what I thought. I thought, oh, you rebuilt Egon's gun. Right? <laughs> That's, I'm like, what is this? And then, you know, they're like, okay, we have to, you know, help people. And I have, and Paul's like, I need to get my wife. And what, did Landis ask to keep the gun with her? Right. It's like, oh, nice. That's not kind of jerky, but whatever. Right. <laughs> See, I kept thinking that that was her boss that drowned. Right. And that's, yeah, no. I'm like, right. uh, say, that makes no sense either way because right. of it. But right. yeah. I was like, kind of expecting him to come back. Right. Well, Ryan wasn't all for doing the test either. I mean, he was probably the one that was the most negative out of the group when they were told they had to conduct the test. Mm. Maybe that's why he's right. the most angry right now. Yeah. Well, everything weird seems to be happening, and somehow everyone's like, let's go to the church. Now, I don't know if it's so much because they all know the church has a backup generator, or because people freak out, and one of the things that people do when they freak out is go to church. Right. I think it was probably a combination. You had the... the True believers probably gathering there because they felt that that was the only safe place. And then you had the ones that had the knowledge of the backup generator that weren't completely uh, full of the faith that went there because they knew that there would be power there. Okay. And we, we do have Zug in the jail, and he gets, like, attacked. Because he's like, right. I'm not going to church. I'm going to stay right. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, okay, I'll go. It's like, yeah, you get choked a little bit by something you can't see, and suddenly you're like, oh, okay, I guess we're going to church. Yep. <laughs> Changed your tune pretty quick. Sure did. And then Carla almost sticks a knife in uh her poor husband's chest, which she's funny because she's hiding, and she's like, I thought you were one of those weird, like, fake premonition thingies or whatever, and he's like, She's like, how do I know you're not? And he corrects her. He's like, you don't have to call them both of those names. You could just say one or the other. And she's like, oh, yeah, the ghost wouldn't be that pretentious. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which I was I was laughing, but I'm like, oh, that sounds like me and Jason, like just being jerks to each other. <laughs> right. And, of course, they have to um, get everybody together that gathers in the church and start hanging Christmas lights and... Anything and everything that could possibly uh, run off some electricity to try to keep the ghost out of the church. But you also have a lot of negativity happening with between the Lambda people right. and the town people. Yes. Each is blaming the other, which I think Lambda pretty much knows, oh crap, we did something. Yes, I would think so. But... The townspeople are like, they're not doing anything. They're just sitting on their butts, blah, blah, blah. Well, hello, both people are being affected because when the do ghosts try to, like, come in or try to lure them out, they're talking to them as their loved ones. Right. And heck, the one guy, he he was grabbed and killed on his way in. It's like, wow, that's not going to mess you up. That was one of the weird kissing cousins that we've seen. Right. So. It's like, what is going to happen? It just seemed like it was going to be really difficult for anybody to survive. And are those all the people left in town? Because that's not a whole lot of people. Exactly. Yeah, I, I'm i not sure it was everybody, but I think it was probably a good portion. Because I really don't think that town only had maybe a couple of hundred people total. See, that doesn't even seem like it's that many. No, it huh? seems like there's like, like 50, 50 people, people left. Then, yeah. But I um, just kind of wrote it out. Yeah, they other 
people may have backup generators as well hmm. in their home. It just seemed weird. Yeah, just a little. <laughs> but we know we have to have a group of people go try to get the dam moving so all the electricity can start. Right. So the weird people that get chosen for this. Like, I feel like there's got to be people who worked at the dam. But somehow right. we get Father Dan, Landis, and Roman. It's like, um, what? Yeah. <laughs> you know, take uh, four leads and go to um, up to the dam. Power plant back online. And actually, where they go first is to go get Roman. They figure, well, right. Roman's not at the church. Let's go check out his house. And Roman's just like, yeah, all right. Especially when Landis is like, yeah, you're kind of like Ghost Mace. Yeah. Ghost Repellent. Yeah. It's like, all right, let me get my coat. But- now, of course, while they're heading up to the dam, the church is just getting attacked left, right, and center. We see Abigail go downstairs and finds the glowy orb. That's way huge, and it looked like the same thing she was in. Right. It did look exactly like the thing that she was in. So I was like, oh, crap, if that's there, is that really Father Dan with Roman? Possible, possible. I started to think that maybe it wasn't until later in this episode, which we'll talk about right. it, but it was weird. It was creeping me out. And, of course, Marcus makes his appearance as well and gets his mom down into the basement. Uh, yeah. What the hell? Well... This doesn't happen right away because there's a lot of shit happening, which obviously stuff at the dam is happening at the same time stuff as the church. Right. So let's stay with the church because the power is getting worse. The people at the dam that like are trying to figure it out. And well, all the termites are stuffed with dead animals, which is disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. How did the ghost convince the animals to jump in the turbines? (laughs) Right. That's disgusting. I'm going to say that. But. We we have the church, like, because the power's starting to fail. You have Marcus, like, look at Abigail, and they're, like, kind of do that little head thing, like, yeah, okay, now. Yeah. And Marcus is suddenly <laughs> in the church and not just calling to his mom from outside. And right. she's chasing him. Now, you've just seen all of this shit happen. You've seen Apollo, like, shooting every, every ghost with, like, his little ghost-busting equipment. And you've seen people being dragged and, like, thrown across and arms coming through. And you're like, oh, Marcus, even though I know you're dead, I'm going to follow you. Right. I know you're upset, but at the same time, you just seen a lot of weird shit and you're still going to go. I don't understand that. No. And he ends up leading her down into the basement and they're playing hide and seek. And she sees the big giant orb thingy because it is huge now and he's like touch it mommy and then we can play all the time it's like and you know that's bad yeah and right and she doesn't even pull away though it's like she's going to touch it right and i'm just sitting there going are you kidding me again with this it's like classic horror movie and well she got close enough marcus pushed her into it and she disappears like into the weird I don't know, amniotic sack. The egg. It's like right. it's coming over from our other show is what it is. It's following us. Yeah. <laughs> ah, we should be frightened. But it's like, all right, well, she's gone and he's laughing. Now, that's why, because of that weird egg thing, I was thinking that Father Dan was actually in there and that he wasn't, right. in fact, the Father Dan that's at the dam. Right. But then I would think that another person couldn't go into it. You would think that maybe it's bigger on the inside than it is on the outside. It's TARDIS technology. But back at the dam... That would be scary. (laughs) Ghosts have TARDIS technology. Oh, yeah, it is. Back (laughs) at the dam, they're they're trying to get all the pieces of the dead animals out, which is gross. And Landis keeps, like, uh, trying to chat up Roman, like, oh, uh, where's your mom at? What happened to her? Have you talked to her? It's like, all right, Landis, you are super transparent right now. Right. And I don't know how Roman isn't figuring this shit out. Because when they went to get him, she seen the picture, the portrait, 
finds out it was his mom, and that's the same picture, uh, well, the same woman, I should say. Right. In the saw. same dress, yeah. So, all right, well, she's only seeing dead people, right? Yep. Wah, wah. But it gets worse. It gets so much worse. <laughs> because Maggie is there. And this was weird, and I don't know if they didn't pay attention or what the deal was, because Roman's in the basement trying to find the breakers while the team is clean, cleaning out dead animals. And right, Maggie's there to talk to, to him. Find, help Father Dan with the breakers. He basically is done with them, and then Maggie pops up and... See, Maggie has a shadow, which is what right. was killing me. I'm like... Did they not notice the shadow behind Maggie? Is she supposed to somehow be solid now? What is going on? Right. But, you know, Roman asks her, can you not cross over? She's like, I'm here to communicate with you. But you, ha I have to communicate. But leave the lights off. It makes it easier. Right. It's like, what? But then she yeah. touches him. Yes. And we go back in time. I was so pissed. Because we see Roman's mom. And right. basically, she's being run out of town by Billy, Val, Doug, and Father Dan. Yes, all four of them. So, all the shit that's happened, they all knew, and Father Dan even knew, and has been lying this whole time. Right. Not giving any up any information about exactly what happened to his mom. Right. And... Roman is not a happy camper. No. And especially, I mean, you have Billy and Val saying that they took a, took advantage of their father. Like, really? Really kind of like you taking somebody's boat? Right. Which they didn't like too much. But, I mean, Maggie is just sitting there like, oh, like, I just want to talk to you. And, and Roman's just like, what the hell? First of all, how did you know? So this, because she says I was there, so this happened after she died. But why did she never tell him? Very good question. I mean, I, she does say, like, well, what, I'm going to tell you that my father ran her out? He would have never talked to me. Well, okay, right. still, like, okay, sins of the father. Is it going to come back on the child? Not necessarily, except in this town, it seems. Yeah. But I, I just don't understand why she wouldn't have just told them so that way when Father Dan was lying to him, just bold face all this time. Oh, here's a letter, here's a card, here's some money, da da da. Right. In fact, you told him she left for a man and who didn't want you. Right. Wow. That is shitty. Like beyond, yes, it is. beyond. <laughs> and uh, that's why Roman goes to confront them, and Father Dan comes clean about it, and they're like, "Yes, we chased her out of town," but. She but Billy kept saying, yeah, we did, but she was alive. Right. And Landis does say, yes, I, I seen her. And he's like, that's why you kept asking me questions. She's like, right. I seen her at Landis, but she didn't look like these other ones. So I feel like he should be talking to Landis, but he's like super pissed with all of them. Yes. So I just didn't quite understand why he was so mad at Landis. But at the same time... Okay, you're mad because the town has treated you, you like shit. I get that. I totally understand that. But right. you're going to let the entire town die because now you're pissed. You're not going to help them with the turbines. And then you're going to have even more pissed off ghosts who are already, like, hateful to you. Right. So at some point, they may well try to do something to you, and you're going to be all alone on this island. So... Right. I know it's shitty, and I know it's hard, but maybe you need to work with these people and then be pissed off at them. Right. Because Which, he, he gonna just... That's going to be hard for him to do because he's been fairly much abused most of his life there in Fort Moore. Right. From Doug on down. So to find out they had something to do with getting her, his mother booted out of town and then somehow dead, which I still don't think he's gotten the entire truth from that group. No, because like I said, Billy is the one who kept saying, no, she left, she was alive, we just we ran her out. And right. Father Dan was, like, not answering. Right. 
And this just really was pissing me off. Yes. Because then Roman's just like, I'm out. Good luck. He leaves, and then you see ghosts walking in. It's like, oh, great. So they managed to at least get the turbine cleared so one of them will start doing something. Right. And maybe produce some energy for the town. But Father Dan, like, kind of walks off, and Marcus finds him. And when he, he kind of starts torturing him. Yeah. And when this happens, this is why I think there's no way that Father Dan is actually in that egg. Right. Because why would he be torturing one of his own? That's what I'm thinking. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Well. Now, I don't know why they didn't want to take Father Dan. Maybe because he is the father that they figured, well, I'm taking his body. He's, maybe there's just, they can't completely take over without being completely gestated. And the egg wasn't big enough for Dan to fit in or something. Oh, okay. I don't know. Yeah, it, it there's some questions there. And can I say, just like when Marcus was alive, Marcus is the creepiest little frickin' ghost child. <laughs> Especially when he's talking and his face is, like, moving, and so, like, things aren't matching up. I'm like, oh, God. Yeah. It's creeping me out. Special effects, well done. Oh, yeah. And Billy professes his love for Landon because they yes, think they're does. about to die. It's like, oh, well, it worked. Yay, electricity. And then alarms. Like, not good. Not good. Why they weren't working on both of the turbines, I don't know. But it's like, oh, too much power is being drawn off one generator. We need to do something. I'm going to turn some of this off. Right. And Billy goes to do it, and he gets zapped. Now, I don't know if that was a ghost that did that or if that was just an actual, like, overload. Right. But then she kind of... hard to tell (laughs) because we haven't really seen any of the ghosts be able to shoot electricity out of themselves. So you kind of figure it was just... An overload. an overload. Yeah. And then, well, his heart's not beating because Landis starts some CPR. Right. And scene. Because we're going to screw with you guys hardcore. Right. It was, <laughs> it was bad enough to start the episode, and it's a whole lot worse. Yeah, I don't know. This, this is crazy. I don't know what's happening. Yeah. And crazy in a good way. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Fantastic show so far, and it's just wild, and you have no idea who's going to survive. Right. Well, what do you guys think? Shoot us an email at sci fi talk at fangirlzone.com so we know who you think is going to be alive at the end of this. And what do you think about the whole thing with Roman's mom? It's crazy. But don't forget to rate and review us on iTunes and any other platform you're finding us on. We do love getting your comments and reviews. You know, we read some of them that we've gotten on youtube and we haven't gotten any reviews on itunes but thank you guys for rating us we do appreciate that and of course you know good ratings and reviews are going to help other fans of the show find us tell your friends we do hope you're enjoying the podcast and tis the season to be shopping so if you're going to do that over on fangirlzone.com we have some shopping links we have amazon and a couple other ones which it doesn't cost you any extra it just kind of helps us out out a little bit and hopefully we will all still be in this together for a long time, not just with this show, but with Sci-Fi Talk, because hopefully net neutrality does not get voted down. But uh, we have our Redbubble store open, too, which we have an awesome logo. Yes, I have to say this is an awesome logo created by yes, Des Taylor for us for Sci-Fi Talk. And then you have our Fangirl Zone logos, two different colors, and our Fangirl and the interview logo, which is... Me and my husband. Although sci-fi talk is me and Steve. Although we look way cooler, Steve, than we do in real life. I'm going to say Des Taylor, awesome artist from the UK. He's amazing. And then yeah. in the other logo, for our interview logo, made me and my husband look amazing. My husband's like, wow, I look awesome and buff. <laughs> so, <laughs> so check out the, the stuff on Redbubble. I highly encourage you buying a t-shirt. I actually have to go on and buy a phone case because my Doctor Who one finally decided to die on me today while whilst out shopping. Yeah. So, <laughs> but uh, that's about that. <laughs> but check out, just if you go and check out the logos, because I think they're awesome. Uh, and that's it for this episode of Sci-Fi Talk. I'm Sean Fangirl S. And I'm Steve. As far as I can tell, he's nothing more than ghost garlic. And until next time. Mm, garlic.